Hello right, everyone, welcome back. Project Resolve, a huge, massive update, stability, balancing for PvE, for PvP, balancing of talents, balancing of gear, balancing of weapons, the biggest balancing update we're probably ever going to see in the life cycle of The Division 2. Overall, the impact this is going to have to the game is going to be substantial, but at what cost? Well, it does come at a cost, so let's check out what Project Resolve is all about. So here is the article from The Division 2 following the Twitch stream today, where they went into a, a lot more detail uh, in terms of exactly uh, what changes are coming. However, I think it's best we'll wait for the patch notes to come out before the PTS. There is a PTS coming, you'll see in a moment, um, and then we'll go over all those changes, but for today, I think it's best we just go over Project Resolve and what the plan is. So it says a comprehensive update for The Division 2 aimed at improving player experience and laying the groundwork for future content. With your feedback in mind, our focus is on enhancing the game's health and stability. Starting with the public test this week, as we can see here, December 15th to December 18th, and followed by another in January, we will release the full update uh, We'll release the update in full alongside Year 5 Season 3 in February for all Division 2 players. From addressing thousands of bugs to enhancing PvP, we're leaving no stone unturned. These proposed changes are not final and are intended to provide you with a preview of the work being done uh, in Project Resolve. So as we can see here, we've got uh, PTS Phase 1 starting in a couple of days for three days. Quality of life fixes balancing PvP improvements, changes to Descent, Countdown and Summit. We then got another one, January 19th to the 22nd. Again, changes based on phase one of the of the, the PTS. It says year five, season three, gear, weapons, and talents as well will be included in phase two. Season three, Vanguard, starting on February 6th. Project Resolve will be deployed on February 6th. And then we've got the uh, year five, season three, Vanguard, start manhunt. And then we've got year six, onwards. Now, they, you'll probably notice in there's something missing from here, or certainly... Uh, something will be missing as we go into this a little bit deeper soon. So in terms of global events, these are some improvements that they're making to global events to make them more fun and engaging. Guardians, when killing an angel in addition to restoring armor to full, 50% of total armor is added as bonus armor. Increased damage buff from 30 to 50%. Minions now receive 15% of incoming damage instead of being invincible. And damage buff duration increased from 10 to 15 seconds. As you can see, these are affecting Polarity Switch, Hollywood, uh, Shade Exposed, and Reanimated. All of these are getting uh, updates to make them more fun, more engaging. I know what you're saying. We just want more global events. I'm totally with you guys. But unfortunately, that is not something that Massive are looking to do at uh, this current time. What they are planning to do is just make the game overall better before the DLC comes out. Projects. We have made a few changes and additions to completion of conditions and rewards to make projects more interesting and worthwhile. The changes will affect the following projects. Daily projects, weekly projects, all of the projects basically. Uh, game modes. We're planning to introduce a new talent rotation feature in Descent and shorten up run lengths to expedite encounters with the Nemesis. I think this here, shorten run lengths to expedite encounters, is really important. And so I'm interested to see how they're going to do that. Um, Summit fans can anticipate the resolution of the level 100 XP issue. And optimizations have been implemented in all three modes, Countdown, Descent, Summit, leading to enhanced stability and performance overall. Expertise. Okay, Project Resolve makes expertise upgrades more easily attainable to ensure that the cost of upgrading are in proportion to the benefits gained. Our intention is to prioritize the player's time by implementing this change. So levels 1 to 5, polycarbonate, 385 is what you're going to need. Uh, levels 1 to 10 uh, for carbon filter, 670. 1 to 10, perfective fabric. You can see the numbers here, guys. Uh, so exotic materials, 11 to 24. Total, you're going to need 42. For gear, for weapons, you're going to need 42. And skills, you're going to need 42 as well. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm not sure how that currently works against what we have to do now uh, if someone knows exactly how many exotic materials we need right now compared to this that would be interesting to know because i don't actually know that weapon balancing 
General buff balance to pa pass aims to enhance the appeal of less popular weapons and make them more engaging for all agents. I will say this, guys. Pretty much universally across all of these changes that are being made, stuff just being buffed. Uh, we're just going to be stronger than ever. Power creep uh, no longer exists because it is everywhere in this game. <laughs> uh, we are becoming way more powerful as agents with this update. Does that mean they're going to balance NPCs? Possibly. I don't know. Gear balancing our objectives to enhance the strength of the two and three piece brand set bonuses in order to reward players for committing a specific brand set. So what they did say is that as of right now, people aren't really committing to three pieces of a brand set because it's just way better to have either one piece or two pieces and then take something else. Unless you've got something like Empress, which you would use all three and there are some others where you would. What they're not going to do is actually change the, the uh, bonuses that you get. They're just going to actually buff the two and three piece bonuses of certain brand sets. New features. We've made several improvements to the imagery system. We've added a new menu called Tinkering, uh, which combines the features of optimization and recalibration into one convenient location. This menu, along with expertise menu in the talent attribute library, now has a separate tab in the inventory that can be accessed from anywhere, reducing the need to return to the base of operations. We will also adjust the optimization cost to reduce the expenses associated with upgrades. Additionally, we have introduced the option to directly send the item to the stash with a warning if the stash is full. Um, moving on, quality of life updates. We have made some significant changes to the loot crate system. The open world loot crates will now scale with the world difficulty, resulting in higher quality gear and improved stats across the board, particularly in challenging and heroic difficulties. This is something a lot of people have been asking for a lot of the time. For a long time, they're finally doing it. I, I know why they didn't do it initially, but I'm kind of glad they've made that change. It's been many, many years now. Additionally, we're introducing a new feature that allows players to instantly use an armor kit to replenish 25% armor with a 5 second cooldown. This is in addition to the existing functionality of holding the button to replenish 100% armor. Now this is something that I know that a lot of PvP players are going to be very happy about. I even saw Marker Blades comment to say this might even bring him back to PvP because I've also heard, and it might be in here as well, that they're going to fix the spawn uh, trap in conflict by adding turrets to conflict to, to stop that from happening. So, uh, I mean, I've not watched the live stream myself, so I can't confirm or deny that, but I'm sure it was on Twitter, someone posted about it, I'm sure it's true. Furthermore, we'll be implementing a cap on the Shade Watch HP bonus at level 2000, and an increase in the HP gain from levels 1 to 1000 players will gain 30, uh, 30 health uh, per level and 1 per point from levels 1001 to 2000. The HP gain remains at 30 half points per level. Beyond level two, uh, level 2000, there will be no additional HP bonuses. Again, for PvP, this is a huge change. Uh, I know this was a big issue in PvP, or at least that's what I've heard. I, I, I don't play PvP. It kind of makes sense, though, if you're level 10,000 compared to someone who's level 1000, you've got quite a lot of extra hate health. I don't know if health is a massive thing in PvP, but I've heard people complain about it who play PvP, so I suspect it is. PvP improvements, conflict, our objective is to strengthen the identity of conflict um, as the purest PvP experience available in Division 2 by making it more balanced for all players regardless of the time they invested in the game. Thus, all agents joining conflict will have their expertise and shade watch bonuses removed. Great. That's a good change. The caches that agents can obtain in the mode will offer a greater quantity and improved quality of rewarded items. They need to be more incentive to play PvP, so if you're going to get more rewards and better rewards, that might be it. Changes affecting the spawn area include the plan to add turrets to all spawn points to prevent spawn camping and forbid equipped items and loadouts from being changed while in conflict. Loadout switching and individual pieces of gear will be allowed only once per spawn. There we go. Status effects. This is a big one. Status effects adjustments prioritize the PvP experience. All the changes to status effects, including the project resolve, are focused on reducing their impact and introducing counterplays. The intention is to make status effects in PvP more manageable and provide agents with additional options to counteract them. Even though these changes primarily target the PvP experience, we'll also monitor their impact on PvP. Diminishing returns have, ad have been added for all status effects in PvP, categorized into crowd control, shock and snare blind, and damage over time, bleed, burn, and poison. Diminishing returns will not apply in PvE. Diminishing return means that each subsequent application of the same category of status effects will have reduced duration until full, full immunity is reached. Plague of Outcasts in PvP is also affected by diminishing returns, with stacks being halved upon transfer. Additionally, 
The severity of immobilizing status effects has been reduced. 50% has a protection for 5 seconds is better added once per target for all repair skills. Poison has been included in the list of effects that the booster hive cleanses. And boost duration now scales with skill tiers, ranging from 5 seconds to a maximum of 6.5 seconds at skill tier 6. If any of you guys play VP PvP, please let me know what you think about these changes. They sound good, but I don't know. Um, I know the spawn camping stuff, that will be great. The instant med kits will, will, will be great as well. And, and any adjustments they make to skill, to status effects in PvP, um, I think will be will be good overall. There is a lot of talent changes coming as well. As we can see, we've got weapon talents, we've got gear talents. There's changes coming to the dark zone. I mean, there's a lot of stuff coming, guys. Um, so here's some of the changes that agents can expect in the non-invader dark zone. For example, the activate, activate, activation time. I'll get there. The Gurren Rogue has been increased to 5 seconds from 0 0.75 seconds. The duration of the first Rogue rank has been extended from 20 to 30 seconds. So there's just some other changes there. Pretty sure there is a... Uh, uh, there's some other stuff here as well. It says contents, PV improvements, and PVP improvements. See, let's, see, let's see what that's all about. So, guys, there was nothing else on those links, but the other thing that I wanted to add, the big thing, I said at the start of this video that all of this stuff is great. Really, really great. Definitely what the game needs. However, it does come at a cost. The cost is that the DLC, the story DLC, that I believe was coming with Season 4, has actually been delayed um, by... I think it's about a year. Uh, it's been delayed anyway, into year six, um, so that this update can be pushed out. Now, in my opinion, I'm not really sure where I, where I am with that. I'm not really sure if I'm happy or sad about that. Really glad they brought these changes in, uh, or are bringing these changes in. The game absolutely needs them. But I was really looking forward to the DLC, the story DLC, playing the same missions over and over again. You know, it, it's boring. It, it just is. And so I was really looking forward to that story. DLC. From Massive's point of view, look, if they brought a story DLC out and they still had all these major balancing issues, even if they could attract a new audience with that story DLC, that audience would soon go away because of those issues. So the way they're doing it here, where they're trying to balance the game as best as possible, get it in a really good place, then bring story DLC out, kind of makes sense uh, in that those players that then join uh, the game, those new players or even us, um, old players will then stay, keep playing the game. I mean, us old players are going to keep playing the game anyway, regardless of really what happens. They can rely on us. I mean, we played the game when there was no content, you know? So they can rely on us. But for those new players, what they're going to want is they're going to want to bring out some story DLC. People are going to come in, new players are going to come in and, be, you know, play that new story DLC, but then they're also going to have this great game behind it. It's not me saying that The Division 2 isn't a great game, but it is unbalanced. There's, there's no two ways about it. The game needs a health update. It's needed a health update for, for years. So this health update is really going to capture those new players and keep them playing. So commercially, I understand it. And I'm I'm okay with it. Uh, you know, I just wish the story DLC was sooner. That's all. Uh, it does mean as well that the Division 3 is probably not going to be coming for another three to five years. I'm going to make a video on that because I still want to give my thoughts and opinion on a Division 3. But anyway, that's for another video. There you go, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Once the PTS patch notes come out, I'm hoping, if I have the time, to cover those patch notes for you. And I'll be able to go over all of the changes. But what I can say, and what I will repeat, is that overall, agents were going to be way stronger. Everything is being buffed. All the stuff that you basically don't use is being buffed so that it becomes usable. So that's really good. This is something that I've wanted for a very long time. Really, really happy about that. Anyway, until the next one. Epica.